welcome back to the From the Farmyard podcast. To the From the Farmyard podcast. I don't know if I said that right the first time. Maybe I did. Um, and today we are going to be showing you guys what we do for garden cleanout. Since HOA, I am representing the Homesteaders of America shirt, um, been doing a lot of things. A lot of things around here that needed done that I had either put off or that now is just the time to do them, more so, putting off part. Um, this, like, I don't know where my finger, right here. Like, this tree needs to be cut down. Things like that, just getting everything cleaned up and prepared for spring again. Um, these beds had corn in them. <clears throat> the corn is actually laying uh, right over here. I need to sort through it, see what can be used for fall, decorations and then that's going to its assigned people who it needs to go to um and yeah um oh, as you probably see i am in the process of moving all of these buckets and cleaning them out getting everything ready and i'm going to be growing stuff in them over winter in the greenhouse the back corner is not done yet so i'm not going to show you that um it just needs to be weeded all of this has been freshly weeded um, looking really, really good right now. Um, very excited. I'm excited for spring, but we still have a few months <laughs> until then. But it's going to be fine. This is the strawberry patch. Um, very sad right now. Uh, it was very overgrown. I need to add more. I think I'm going to add hay or straw, actually, over top of this for winter and then add more, take away a lot of the hay and only leave a little bit once everything's popped up, and then add more compost. Um, more on that in the spring, actually, or when I'm doing it this winter, which uh, anything that I'm growing this winter, I'm sure will upload with shorts or post on Instagram. However that may be, you guys will stay updated, I promise. Um, but both of these beds had corn in them. I'm going to try to do greens in them, succession so, um, succession planting with the greens, and let's hope that that is good. I need to add a little bit more compost to both of these, maybe one wheelbarrow full um, to each one, and then that will be my overwintering, or getting everything ready for winter. I don't really do a lot. I know, well, I won't spoil anything that Reagan has that she's going to say, um... We don't know how this is going to look right now, but I won't spoil anything. I'll let you see what Reagan does. But I don't do that. A lot of people do. Um, I just... I, I haven't had the compost last... I didn't have the compost last year to actually put onto my beds at this time. We waited until spring. But now I have the compost. I have everything ready, so next year it's not dependent on when we get compost. I just need to get it before fall, and then I can just do the same thing. And that's the preferred mef method for me, is just having things in advance, um, so I can go through it um, when I need it, and just really go through it and use it. Um, there are a lot of things right now, like my cucamelons that you saw, which I can show you around it, has not been weeded it at weed eated as of yet um i'm slowly working that way i am i've been trying to work on this because i know that this greenhouse cover you can't see it the greenhouse cover i know it needs to get on this saturday uh, a lot of things are happening on this saturday today's thursday um i think the 19th or something like that but saturday a lot of things are going to happen with that um, there's a lot of stuff here. I'm gonna show you anyways, though. Well, I'll show you some of the better, the better looking side to these cucamelons. Um, the underside. There are still some cucamelons to be found. Like this one and that one. Um, but yeah, these guys are still going strong. I'm not gonna tear them out when they're still producing and I can still get pickles and thing and still make pickles with them. It's just not, if something's still producing and you still have time, like I couldn't plant anything else right now and still get a harvest. I'm getting these, 
I can put up enough cucumelons to do, or enough pickles to have enough for all winter and into next year, and probably enough to take us until we're making pickles next year and even then some. We don't really eat a lot of pickles. Um, haven't I don't really like pickles, but I do want to try these uh, cucumelon pickles. But it has been a work in progress with getting everything. Like I said, um, topping beds off. I, I just want everything ready for spring. Um, it's really dependent upon how this greenhouse looks. Um, and again, I don't know how it's going to look. But we have a few things that are still growing. Um, I've learned a lot this year, actually, which just isn't the video for that. But I've learned a lot. And it's really so great when you can sometimes... I mean, getting away sometimes is good because you can get away and come back, fresh mindset, all that. HOA was a good place for me to start with getting everything... With coming back and saying, hey, this needs done. This is the next thing that needs to be done or it looks like this now, let's just knock it out and get it done with. And it's been nice outside. I've wanted to be outside, and yeah. This is my perfect opportunity. Before it gets too cold, I'm not out here a lot. But things like this, just going all around the property, um, cutting trees down. This is one year's growth. This was in here last year, I don't think. I don't believe so. I think it's one year's growth. And then just preparing beds, which, like I said, a lot of my preparing for winter, preparing my garden for winter is putting the greenhouse cover on, being able to grow greens uh, through the winter. It gets cold enough to kill them here, so they need to be protected, and this for me is just the best way to make sure that they don't get um, frostbitten. Doing that, putting hay on the strawberries, um, is a maybe. I have another area out here, but we still have things that are doing, as of right now, we still have things that are doing fairly good. Um, I'm going to be doing carrots, and I have some potatoes that are still do that have reseeded. I'm working on all of that. Um, trying to figure out what needs to go where, what needs to be put up for winter, what needs to go in in certain areas. But, tomatoes are getting pulled out. I will show you guys the tomatoes. I didn't show these in the garden tour that I did. There are chickens everywhere. But, this is what my tomatoes look like right now. I need to take them down. I actually don't take the trellis down. But I do need to remove the dead vines from them and I have a new system that I'm gonna be trying next year with the tomatoes I'll share more on that I'm sure we'll share more on um we'll share different ways to do things different things that we've learned and yeah but I'm gonna get all of this put out uh, cleaned out I'm going to forget what I'm gonna do get all of this cleaned out add more compost mix everything in <laughs> And then this will be all set for next year. I don't need to worry about any nutrients leaking out because nothing's going to be growing in it. It's things like that that make a big difference. I am going to take out not really like the whole top layer of soil, but I am going to take out a decent amount because I've had tomatoes drop and things like that. So really just from like here over, I'm going to take out a bit. I've been going through and weeding all of my spaces. First off, because they need... They they weren't that bad. They needed to be weeded, yes. Could it have waited? It could have probably waited. But it's better just to do it now. This space... I consider these beds. So every time that I'm referencing something, if I don't specifically say kiddie pool, and I say garden beds, this is what I mean. Uh, by garden beds as, lo uh, uh, as well as the other spaces. These... The peppers are still producing. Peppers... There's a few peppers on there. Things like that. Um, we have the kitty pool, whatever. And I will, well, I do want to mention this now. I have mentioned it in the garden tour. So if you haven't watched that, go watch that. And then this will take you to like two days after that garden tour. But it is a lot to 
figure out, especially when you're doing kiddie pools, there are crickets over here. It's a lot to figure out with the garden tours and things. Or not with the garden tours, but figuring out... My mind went elsewhere. Um, a lot to figure out when you're trying to gauge what you're doing with the um, kiddie pool growing. I am going to be doing a video on <clears throat> my channel. The plan right now is to do a video on my channel um, explaining more in depth what I've learned and we will probably do a short here or a blog post. Stay tuned for that. Uh, that will be announced actually way before this, but we'll have a blog post on it and things like that. But making sure that you have enough soil in your kiddie pools is a big deal. I learned that the hard way. I had sunflowers that were growing really well in one of the bet or in one of the kiddie pools with the peppers and didn't do awful. I didn't plant any big sunflowers like the 14 footers or things like that because I knew it wasn't going to I mean there wasn't enough soil to support that and I knew that and it wasn't going to grow to the bottom. I did not gauge for enough soil in them so I am going to make sure that those are topped off, not, maybe not first, because I have the tomato bed, the other bed, and I would like to get one wheelbarrow full in each of these, as well as the strawberry one, just because those are predetermined spaces, or spaces that have already been handled with for more than a year. Um, the kiddie pools, though, I need more soil in those, and that's really just going to depend on what I have to spare. Um, of course, the bigger ones are going to hold priority. The little ones, I can maybe get around it. I don't want to do that, but I might be able to get around it. And I know I'm getting more compost next year, but just so I can go ahead and get things planted, I would like to have certain elements done so I can get more harvest in and I'm going to be a lot better with succession planning and things like that next year. I hit a wall as you, I'm not going to go into it, but I hit a wall um, early summer through late summer and that's what it was. That's how I, a lot of things turned out not good this year in the second half, but it was a good year, but also the weather just played a really big part in it as well. But getting these spac spaces predetermined like I can grow greens in these and these are going to be completely fine I can actually grow I can actually put more compost into these beds right now plant greens and not have to worry about a lot of nutrients being sucked out of the soil because greens are not heavy feeders um, I don't know if we have a video on that right off the top of my head right now but they aren't heavy feeders so you don't have to worry about something like that I could plant them right now in this bed after the corn's been in it but I would like to go ahead and get that compost out from over there to where it's not just sitting where it is first off, but get it moved into the soil and go ahead and start building that microbiome. And microbiome for the win, it's gonna help your soil a lot more. But I will be doing a full video on my channel and we'll probably take it into shorts here about what I'm doing um, with the kiddie pools. I want to really perfect it. Uh, and perfecting things is not easy when you're gardening because there are so many different factors that have to align for you to be able to quote-unquote perfect something. And you can grow t a ton of things in a kiddie pool. A ton of things. I have peppers that are doing well. Did they take a while to do things? Yes. What did I realize? The area that I have them in is bad because it does not get enough sun. Peppers need a lot of sun. More than what they're getting, I'm pretty sure I haven't measured, but they need more sun than what they're getting. Soil, they need deeper soil than what they have. So it's things like that, but also knowing the needs of your plants. I know the needs of the plant. I just didn't think it was gonna be that much of a problem. I was basing it off of a of, of raised bed things where you fill the raised bed and you're fine, you can leave a little bit off, but the raised beds are a lot deeper. But that's what I had to learn this year. And next year, I know, 
more soil in those beds or in those kiddie pools, but also probably moving things around. I don't want to move things around. Uh, I need to really see what plans are. And things grow fine there, and I think it's going to do really fine over the long days of summer. So I might not move anything this, uh, this coming up year, but evaluate next fall and just see where I'm at. But I think that's it for my overwintering portion of this. I am not going to do anything with the buckets, really. Um, I really mentioned it. I'm going to be growing some, some food over the winter with carrots that will be harvested in... February or March right before I'm planting my potatoes and stuff like that. I feel really recharged and since I am growing on such a small space there's only so much that I can do. I'll be going more in depth on this later in my channel and more on this channel as well but it's... I only have such a small space to grow in. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six raised beds and a bunch of kiddie pools, and a bunch of buckets. This year I did not use everything to the best of its ability, and I realized that, and a lot of learning and growing and experience and skills are knowing that you did not do something to the fullest of its ability. And I realized that. I could have done way better with what I did. And this is me critiquing myself here. I could have done a lot better with my corn management. I could have done a lot better with my tomato management. I could have done a lot better with how I manage my kiddie pools. I could have done a lot better with how I manage these, the five gallon buckets. And I am getting fired up about this because it's important to look at. It's reevaluating what you have. And I am really reevaluating because I, these buckets were sitting empty for months. I could have grown something in them. Whether it been whether it have been cucumbers or squash and zucchini, for example, you can grow so many things in buckets. I started in buckets. I will forever use buckets. I mean, even when I have a bunch of space, I will even still use buckets then because it's I don't know something about a bucket garden just is like really nostalgic for me, and it's because that's where my start was. My start was in a bucket garden. So when I came back from all of this and realized really how much of a waste I had with these buckets. I was like, geez, that's... could have grown a bunch of carrots. We could have froze these for all winter. I could have started another round of potatoes, probably, because of how far... because of me being in the South. Virginia's controversial with that. Nobody start on me. <laughs> Nobody start with me on that. Um, but I could have started so many more things. I could have done, like I said, carrots, potatoes. I could have done greens and moved them up against the back of the, or up against the house to where they could have gotten enough sun to grow, but not enough sun to bolt right away, or a bunch of the heat. I could have done the squash. I could have done the zucchini. When the squash and zucchini died in the big bed, I could have done them here, and I didn't. So, when I start getting into that area next year. <laughs> Reagan and everyone watching remind me to go back to this video and timestamp where it is. That I need to start listening to. Maybe I need to listen to the whole thing. Maybe anybody who's listening to this needs to listen to the whole thing. Again and again and again. Every single year if that's what it takes, do it. I'll leave this here partly because my phone's gonna die but also because I'm going over the allotted time that I probably had. Um, Use your spaces, max them out, and when it's tough on you, keep going. If you have to take a break, take a break. Cut back on some things, but know that you are trying your best, and that's all I can tell you is to try your best each and every single day. Even if you're just doing 1% better than you were yesterday, you're doing something. Get out and weed your garden. Get out and plant a seed that you might not think you need, but you probably do. So, thank you guys for watching my portion of this winterizing your garden bed and I'll see you in the next one.